Hello and welcome to VM Blog's expert interview series. And today we're once again joined by Shahar Fogel, the CEO of Rookout. It's great to have you back with us. Hey, David, thanks for inviting me again. And always a pleasure to, to be talking to you. So for those unfamiliar with Rookout, you recently shifted your positioning from debugging to focus more on developer-first observability. Can you explain this change and what value Rookout adds to developers? So, so I think it's not really a change. It's just, you know, we've grown uh, and, you know, we need to, and we want to enlarge uh, what we do and the value that we bring. You know, debugging is, is, is a part of giving developer what they need, but, uh, you know, as part of the shift left motion in the industry, the developer needs uh, uh, more tools and more ways to understand their software and also, you know, develop faster. Everyone's talking about quality and velocity of development on one end, MTTR and solving customer issues fast, SLAs on the other end, they need the tools to do so. So what we're giving them basically is a full suite of tools and products uh, that, you know, are on one end, from the observability world, they give them the ability to get logs, metrics, traces, uh, anything they need and want from their application. But, you know, developer first in the way that developers are used uh, to consume product, to use product, to buy products, uh, what have you. So, you know, we're taking these two together and, and building kind of the next generation of, of observability tools for engineers themselves, not for ops, not for infrastructure, uh, you know, great companies in that domain that are doing a hell of a job, but, you know, they're not targeted at developers and developers are not using them as part of their day to day. So this is where we come into play, basically. And I know Rookout's core offering to date has been the ability to debug complex applications in production. I imagine debugging in customers' production environments is highly sensitive and complex. So how do you accomplish this? Yeah, so, you know, you're saying highly, compl uh, highly complex uh, and, and sensitive, you know, uh, two, three, four years ago when we went out to clients, it was like selling, a, you know, a dentist appointment, you know, debugging in production. <laughs> what is this? Uh, but eventually, you know, what we developed is the ability to instrument application in a live manner. So not, not needing uh, to instrument it prior to deploying the software uh, like today. Uh, the status quo of needing to define to write log lines in the code to add metrics and traces and spans and what have you, then only deploy the software. We're saying, don't pre-think about what you need. Push the software. You have the rookout uh, agent together with the software, and and once it's deployed, you're able with a click of a button to do anything you want. Uh, you know, add log metric traces, uh, all kind of the three pillars of observability, change verbosity of existing logging libraries, kind of the full suite of, of capabilities that we're doing in a live manner. So clicking a button, getting the data without writing more code, uh, without redeploying the application, which is kind of the major time consuming part of getting what you need there and without stopping the normal performance of an application. So think about breakpoints that breaks the application. But what we developed is non-breaking breakpoints. It just takes snapshots from the application and you can go line by line and understand what's going on, even in production. So we don't have to copy databases, replicate environments, simulate things, create new uh, infrastructure just to understand what happened there. You can do it there. And today you're announcing a new line of IDE plugins. We, we know developers spend a lot of time coding in their <clears throat> IDEs. Why did you decide to launch this now? And what additional benefits will developers get that they didn't have before? Um, so, so basically developers are, are a unique persona. You know, they're very picky on, on what they want and what they need and the tools that they're using. Uh, and, you know, it's not like HR or finance where you go top down, here's a tool, use it, and everyone needs to get used to it. Uh, they're, you know, slicing, dicing, and choosing uh, the way they want to to consume or use product and the way uh, and, and which product they want to use. So we have the the web uh, version of Rookout. It's a fully fledged uh, platform, you know, with administrative console and enterprise features, admin, you know, RBAC, SSO, multi-tenant, uh, everything, you know, that large organizations needs and the ability to work there. It's there. It's perfect. You know, we have uh, dozens of clients, enter, you know, Fortune 100, Fortune 1000 customers using it. 
But what we've, we've came to see is that, you know, every developer has its own flavor. Some, uh, and, and a lot of, you know, a lot of developers asked us, okay, can, can I do it also from my ID? You know, I'm there, I'm using it, I have my code there. I want to set a, you know, a, a, a rookout breakpoint, a non-breaking breakpoint, and to use it from there. Now, so we just said, okay, well, let's give them the ability to do so in addition to the web platform. Um, and, and this is kind of the, the new release of the ID plugin for, uh, for the JetBrains family. Of course, you know, together with APIs and CLI tools that uh, will give them uh, the ability to use the, the magic of Rookout everywhere, anywhere, and however they want to use it. Now, you, you talked about the, uh, the new ID plugins and, and you mentioned your web platform. Uh, do they work? together? Uh, do developers need both or just one? And are there benefits to having a debugger in both the IDE and in production? So, so first of all, it's, uh, it's a complementary solution, the IDE plugin for the web platform. You can use the web, you can use the ID, you can use both. It, through the GraphQL, it automatically uh, synchronizes. If you place a breakpoint there, you can see it here, vice versa, same as the data. So it's completely seamless for developers. You know, even within one team, one can use uh, the ID plugin. The second one can use the ID, uh, the web platform. Uh, you know, it's for their choice, as I mentioned before. Uh, in terms of, <coughs> sorry, in terms of when and how users are using it. So I would argue that you know, together with a lot of integrations that we're doing in terms of access, you know, production is always more sensitive. Not every developer has access to production. You need authorization from your manager and you know things like data reduction, security, audit logs, whatever. There, we feel that the, the usage in the web ID is more suitable because you have a, many more mechanisms that enable you to control things in an enterprise manner. Having said that, and together with the value prop of Rookout, we're, we've seen that you know developers are you know with a new world of new worlds not that new anymore but cloud native and distributed environments the engineers that develop software throughout the software development life cycle not only when you know shit hits the fan in in the in production but also in their day to day they're in their id and and their environments are are not on not or already not on their local machine you know that the, it works on my machine doesn't exist anymore you need to test it in Staging, dev, QA, pre-prod, whatever. So there, they're using the ID plugin because it's more daily, it's quicker, uh, it's where they develop their code, they're placing the breakpoint, they see what's happening, getting back, changing the code, really, it's much more agile and fast. So, you know, it's kind of two different scenarios of, of usage. Uh, but again, you know, if they want to use it on their day-to-day -day on the web, they can do, if they want to use it in production through their ID, they can do everything. You know, we're giving them the flexibility to choose. And I know that you and uh, Ruka, you're going to be at KubeCon coming up. Uh, so it may be worth wrapping up this conversation to talk a little bit about Kubernetes. Are there good tools for debugging Kubernetes on the market right now? Uh, is it uh, more difficult to debug than your average application? And then what can Ruka do to help? So, so there are some open source libraries. There are some great companies and tools. Um, at least claiming that they help in the debugging process. Uh, but, you know, because that, you know, with together with Cloud Native and Shift Left, which we both know, and all the observability players understanding that developers are the next big wave of adoption and need and pain that needs to be solved. Uh, so they're trying to talk uh, towards the, this persona, towards the developers, but eventually these products, you know, they help on an infrastructure level, they help on, help on a tracing level. Uh, but the nature of engineers is is uh, is kind of different than these tools. You know, these tools are static. As I mentioned before, you have to predefine everything, even kind of the best companies out there have to predefine everything, push it, and then you have, you know, beautiful visualization, great data collection capabilities, whatever. But the nature of, of, of developers is dynamic. Every day there's a new bug, new issue, a new feature they need to release. And you know, it, it requires different questions that they need to ask and different answers. And these answers are the data types from different locations. And all these tools does not enable them to, to, to have the, the, the dynamic ability to get what they need instantaneously. 
So, you know, Rookout, of course, is in the fr- forefront of this capability. Uh, there's some other uh, competition, uh, um, direct competition for us. But uh, but eventually debugging Kubernetes is very complicated. Uh, it's very painful. And, uh, you know, we're hearing from, from numerous clients of ours that uh, their life has been changed since, you know, they're incorporated Rookout both, you know, in production, which is, you know, the big problem that you know on an enterprise slash uh, a business level but for the engineers themselves also in their day-to-day in the distributed environments throughout the software development life cycle well you know i really enjoyed our discussion today but before i let you go uh where can folks go if they want to learn more about some of the things that we talked about today and what should be their next steps so you know Google is always a good place to search things at. Uh, but, you know, in terms of for us, of course, there's the rookout.com. Uh, you can go understand and, and learn about uh, about our solution, our product, the live debugger, the live logger, uh, the ID plugins, all the all the, um, uh, the the things we're putting out there. Of course, we have a community edition that even people can, you know, download, install for free and try it uh, by themselves. Uh, we have a great uh, uh, blog and knowledge source in our website uh, for things other than Rookout. You know, you're talking about Kubernetes and Java and Go and Python and you know all these uh, 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 various topics that you know coexist with today's uh, cloud native world. Come educate yourself. You know, we have some of the best guys out there writing content, uh, which is always great. Well, great. Well. Thanks again for taking time and speaking with VMBlog today. We really appreciate it. Thanks, David. It was a pleasure. All right. Thanks.